Hello, dear friends. Welcome to another study of the book Right Path by the Spirit Emmanuel through the blessed mediumship of Francisco Candido Xavier. Good morning. My name is Shane Morton. I'm broadcasting to you from Central Virginia. Here we are with another chapter titled Distanced Companions. And this Chapter is chapter 16. It was translated and revised by the Spirit Society of Richmond's team and here for you for our understanding, for our learning and knowledge. We have this text first time in English for us to enjoy. Dear friends, we are going to read the message together. I'm going to show you, I'm going to read to you the messages, and then we're going to take a deep breath, go ahead and grab our water bottles, and then we are going to make some comments on the message. And if you stick around with me at the end, we, as always, we're going to pray together to ask for the good spirits to be with us as we absorb the teachings and we are inspired to also apply the teachings to their daily lives. So chapter 17, Distanced Companions. Emmanuel says, when this or that companion distances themselves from us, leaving us alone in the harvest of the good, our initial reaction is usually one of shock and displeasure. We soon remember the common vows, the shared activities, the hopes and the dreams of the beginning hours. However, while we must keep intact our love for them, it is not a negative feeling of bitterness or reproach that life expects of us in these circumstances. It is necessary to understand and accept them first of all. Remember them in the good they did to us, in the lights they light up, and in facing their absence, consider the possible reasons that dictated it. This person was faced by obstacles that he or she did not manage to conquer. The other one came to experience complex illness. Another one did not find him or herself the strength necessary to secure his or her own hope. And yet another still passed imperceptibly to bands of occult obsession. And if we integrate a certain work team, how do we condemn the sick and injured comrades in service? Of course, if this happens, it is our duty to hand them over to organizations capable of restoring them and to continue working, replacing them as much as possible in the company of progress. Before the friends who leave us on the front of uplifting struggle, let us seek to honor and bless them with our best thoughts of affection and gratitude and recognizing above all that we are all subject to the wisdom and mercy of the Lord. It is incumbent upon us to understand and assist one another in any circumstances. Do this in the certainty that if the Lord allow us to change activity when we so desire. We are already accredited to collaborate with him in the constructions of the gospel. This is so that we learn in the school of experience to serve him in the work of redemption and perfection of this world, always more and better. Let us now take a couple of deep breaths and take all of these in. So, dear friends, the question today is, do you feel 
that you have lost your loved companions in struggle and work in your life? Do you feel abandoned or left behind by them? If so, you're not alone. We are on the earth where imperfect, perfectible spirits are undergoing physical existences and physical experiences to learn all of the attributes that we need to learn to live a better life, which is the true life in the spirit world. If you read any of the books of Emmanuel and Andrea Louise, you're going to see that we are all learning. We are all in progress in both realms. There's a whole realm of spirits with you and I in our daily activities that are also progressing with us. We progress in terms of intellectual progress. We terms in material progress. We learn things. We build things. We do things. We improve medicine. We take care of one another. We volunteer. And we improve in moral qualities we are kinder we are nicer we are compassionate we are beneficent we are all love and kindness towards one another in our best days that's what we do we learn to morally improve and ultimately love is the glue of the universe so we are actually learning to love one another each and every day of our lives so if we feel that we are working, working, working into something that is worthwhile working, let's say the spiritus work, your family um, issues, your volunteer work, then at some times maybe someone may have left your work, may, maybe some companions in struggle have decided to follow a different path. And of course, we're going to respect them because they have free will. As much as you have free will, they have free will. We, we can make choices now. The consequences of those choices will come later as we reap what we sowed later. So let's see what Emmanuel says to us. What to do? He says, what do we do? He says, we must keep intact our love for them. So you may feel that they left us hanging there. But we need to keep in contact, keep intact this love. He says, it's not a negative feeling of bitterness or reproach that life expects of us in this circumstances. So no bitterness, no reproaching, no backstabbing, not talking bad about them. Let them be. They were companions in the struggle now. And as we're going to see, there may be other reasons for their um, abandoning the work and then he gives us examples of he says remember them in the good that they did to us in the light the light that they lit up it's necessary for us to understand and accept them so we accept their choices as much as we would like our choices to be respected now he's saying in face of this absence and hearts Consider the possible reasons that may dictate their absence. So now he's saying, you don't know, we don't know, dear friends, all that happens in someone's life. Some of us on the earth might not even know what happened in our own lives. See the legends of spirits that go about each and every day without knowing that they're more than the physical body, without only worrying about physical, satisfying their physical needs. So... There may be reasons for them to leave that we are not aware of. And here he gives some examples. It says, some have obstacles that did not manage to conquer. Others have illnesses they don't want to disclose. Another one did not find the strength necessary to secure his or her own hope. And yet another passed or fall, fell into the bands of obsession. And he says, if we integrate a certain work team, how do we condemn the sick and injured comrades in service? And here is the meat. We are in the same boat. As much as you may have at some point abandoned some responsibilities, or we may have started things we weren't able to finish, our injured and sick comrades in service may have have that those difficulties now so this 
same about the spiritist work or your workplace. Let's talk about the spiritist work. Has someone left your center? Has someone left your study group? Has they have they promised to volunteer? They didn't show up. Emmanuel is saying here, accept and understand. It's not a negative feeling that they need right now. We must keep intact our love for them. We pray, we pray, we do mutinistic meetings, we talk to them, we try to understand what's going on, we support them so that when they're ready, Jesus might guide them back to us. Or they may go along and start their own thing and go around. So we should not do this. If someone have hurt you, someone left your sphere of work, of service, let them be. They may be even starting things that are greater than what we can imagine and benefit many, many more people. Emmanuel says that when this happens, it's our duty to hand them over to organizations capable of restoring them. So we offer help. Is someone who you know leaving the family because they're struggling with addiction, they're struggling with their marriage, they're struggling at work, mental illness, we hand them over to places that can help them. Remember your multimillionaire being. You have your mental health, you have your physical health, you have your emotional health. Help them as much as you can. And do what? And he goes in and here. He says, not hand them over and be done. No. He says, and continue working. Replace them as if, if you can in the company of progress. So we say, okay, blessed be you. You're now taking care of those issues. But when you're ready, come back. We want your talent. It's more than ever. In these moments of difficulties on the earth, we need to draw good workers to the, to this harvest of goodness. We need to support them. We are all in the same boat. We all are living this situation, learning and growing together. If you would like to be helped, we need to help other folks. He says here, before the friends who left us on the front of uplifting struggle, let us seek to honor and bless them with our best thoughts and act, affections of gratitude. So the, the key thing is let's honor and bless them with our best thoughts of affection and gratitude. No bad mouthing, no complaining about them leaving you, no talking about how they left and their problems with others. Bless them and honor them with thoughts of affection and gratitude because they've contributed. Now they're in a difficult journey, they're in a difficult season, but who knows, it could be us, so we want to be compassionate. He says here, in recognizing above all that we are all subject to the wisdom and mercy of the Lord, it is incumbent upon us to understand and assist one another in any circumstance. Tough, right? Tough love here. No, just love. Love is, love is hard. It's easier to enable people. It's hard to love and help them when they need. It's easy to like someone. It's easy to hang out with them when you, when they're in a good mood, when they're helping, when they don't complain. But it's difficult to stick around with the ones we love when they're having a hard time. So this is he's saying here, it's incumbent upon us to understand and assist one another in any circumstances. He says, do this in the certainty that if the Lord allow us to change our activity, if we so desire, or when we so desire, we are ready, credited to collaborate with him in the constructions of the gospel. Did you know, dear friend, that you are accredited to collaborate with the Lord in the constructions of the gospel. And that's what we're doing today here. We're spreading the good news. We're spreading spiritism, our promised consoler, to anybody who is in need. So if you feel betrayed, if you feel abandoned, here's the antidote. Honor them, best thoughts of affections, understanding and acceptance. We need to change the tide where we seek revenge, where we blackmail people, where we put them on blacklists and they're not allowed in our center anymore. They're not allowed to do a lecture anymore. They're removed from institutions. We need to stop that. 
Because here the spirits are clear. This book was written in the 70s. I'm reading this to you in English for the first time in 2020. But it's time now. The spirits are granting us this blessed opportunity to be together to talk difficult topics. So let's analyze ourselves, go back to question 919 of the Spirit's book about self-knowledge. We need to know of ourselves. What am I here to do? How can I do it? How can I stop wasting time of things on the earth that are important? And whether we like or not, we are forced. We're invited. It was an invitation. The pandemic and staying at home and dealing with our own feelings, living with our loved ones isn't really an option. It's really calling us, go back to the roots, go back to what's important. Why does it matter that you have a luxury car of a big 5,000 square foot home? When jobs are being lost, people are suffering, and none of that can be taken with you if you die. Nobody's wishing anybody's death, by the, by the way, but we are talking. We need to bring this to our attention and think, am I here to enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Is this a vacation? Is it in our last, one of our last opportunities to align with the good? The earth is progressing. We need to progress and be a world where there's more good than evil one day, where we are tired of suffering and where all these difficulties are coming to the surface and we need to say, okay, I can have less so my brother and sister in humanity can have a little bit. So... Questions for our reflections. And at last, he says here, this is so we are credited to collaborate with Christ in the constructions of the gospel so that we learn in the school of experience. We learn when we go through things. We can read this day and night and memorize. Here's the book, the original book. We can memorize the whole thing. But it's in the school of experience that we learn to serve him in the work of redemption and perfection of the world. So you, we are co-creators. We are always serving, and we need to serve always more and better. And dear friends, I'm going to invite you. That's it for the comments for our Tuesday morning conversation. So I'm going to invite you to join me. Make sure you have a water bottle next to you nearby. I'm going to invite you for a prayer. When we pray, we recommend that you close your eyes if it's safe for you to do so, of course. If you're not going to operate machinery, drive, or take care of other ones. And then we we'll repeat the words of the prayer mentally. Shall we? Dear Mother, Father God, here we are, thankful for the blessed opportunity of being together. We feel your love and your kindness showering us with your benevolence and grace. We feel your loving presence through the kindness of our garden angels with us, our spirit guides by our side. As we start this morning, dear God, we pray that we keep our hearts open and our minds at ease to receive your inspiration and guidance for another day. We pray that we are able to feel your loving inspiration to serve one another. That we are able to forgive and forget everything and anything someone has done to us that has hurt us. We ask you that we are able to forgive in abundance and to be kind to those who we believe have betrayed us. We pray for all of those who have left the spheres of service we are involved in. 
and have chosen different paths, we ask for you to strengthen us so we may understand them, we may support them with good feelings and good thoughts of affection and gratitude. Dear God, we pray that we are able to feel all the blessings that you bestow upon us, that we are able to take advantage of all the help that we have and all the resources we have acquired. In both realms of life, we thank the spirit workers that help us every day inspiring us towards service. Dear God, please strengthen us and console us so when we face difficulties, we are able to be resilient. And we pray to this morning for all of humanity in both realms of life in this entire planet Earth. They may be suffering who feel lonely or in despair. We visualize all the good spirits in rays of light traveling all throughout the earth. May each and every human being in both realms feel their loving embrace, the strength and inspiration they give us each and every day. Dear God, Please guide our path today and during this week. Strengthen us and inspire us towards the good. We ask you now for your permission and for your protection as we finish our study today. And so be it. Dear friends, thank you so very much for joining me. And I hope that I've been blessed with another moment where we can study the blessed teachings of our dear Emmanuel, our gratitude to him and to Chico Xavier, wherever they are in the world right now, in the spirit world or in the physical world, and then we're truly indebted to them, our undying gratitude for their service. And dear friends, please join me again next week. God willing, I'll be with you with another chapter from the book by path by the Spirit, Emmanuel. See you then.